and welcome everyone to the digital transformation session of Entrepreneur India's Tech and Innovation Summit 2020. I am Saurav Kumar, Editor of Special Projects, Entrepreneur India, India uh, Moderator for the session. Well, digital transformation is the buzzword today and especially after the COVID-19 outbreak wherein businesses have found their systems archaic. The need of the hour is uh, various facets of uh, digital in business. In this session, we will first have a short introduction to digital transformation by Jaspreet Bindra, digital transformation expert and author, and this will be followed by a panel discussion. So to start with, I request Mr. Bindra to uh, come on stage and give his uh, presentation. Thank you. So what I'm going to do now for the next 10 minutes or so is uh, really talk about uh, how COVID has uh, changed everything, including work. And uh, I'm actually going to draw upon these couple of books that you see in front of you on the screen. Both of them happen to be written by me. The Tech Whisperer was on digital transformation and the immune organization, which has just come out uh, uh, on Kindle uh, last week or last to last week, is actually about uh, uh, how, you know, the work and many other things are being fast forwarded by COVID and how, you know, we can work to make our organization immune. So, you know, uh, the, the, the curious thing about this pandemic is that it has uh, slowed down the world, but at the same time, it has fast forwarded change. And that's a curious paradox. Uh, as this pandemic rages on and it kind of unfolds about us and all its destruction, uh, one of the things which I think is topmost on everyone's mind is to how to find a vaccine for COVID. And you know what vaccines do. Vaccines actually do not cure a disease. Vaccines would uh, go and, uh, uh, you know, where, you know where in, in, a, in a vaccination, uh, the weakened or dead germs or bacteria or viruses are actually uh, injected in a, in a body or in a human being. And because the immune system sees them for the first time, it starts building new kind of antibodies. Uh, and because those viruses are, are, are weakened or dead, these antibodies manage to overcome these weak viruses and, you know, uh, cure us. Uh, but the important thing is that next time when a, a similar disease hits us again, the antibodies are ready and they can withstand uh, uh, the, the disease. And that is what is called actually immunity. And that is what makes our bodies immune. So the idea that came to my mind was that, look, why? Something, like, something as big as COVID has happened. And even as we are racing to find a vaccine for it, why don't we think of COVID itself as a vaccine and learn from it and see what antibodies we can start building for ourselves in our organizations so that next time when a disruption like this hits us, uh, our organization is much more ready to withstand it, is much more resilient to withstand it and therefore uh, becomes immune. And thus the book, The Immune Organization, where we are talking about future-proofing organizations from future COVID-like disruptions. And, you know, as I go forward, we don't have the time for that. Uh, you know, I kind of talk about seven different antibodies uh, that we need to create in organizations uh, to make them more resilient, even sometimes anti-fragile, uh, uh, against the next level, next such kind of disruption which will happen. Now, for example, we all know that, uh, you know, uh, global warming related disruption is going to happen to us in the next 10, 12, 15 years. And so what is it that we can learn from COVID to do now and produce some of these antibodies, you know, in terms of new business models, in terms of newer customer journeys, in terms of automation, partnerships, etc., which can help us withstand that. But a large part of that is actually about work. And if you kind of look at these antibodies, and I have I've detailed them a little bit here, if you look at number one, which is decentralization of work, uh, or number uh, six, which is about lifelong learning, reskilling, multiple jobs, or even about seven, which is the transformation of mindset and culture, it's really about work. And so what I'm going to do for the next two, three minutes or four minutes is just focus on the work part of it and kind of uh, because we are talking in a future of work session and see that how 
uh, we can build certain things today uh, so that our organizations are far more immune next time. Uh, as I said, uh, COVID has slowed down the world, but it has accelerated change. And one of the things COVID has done it has, is that it has fast forwarded the future of work. Work was changing anyway, both from a people and from a technology standpoint. But what COVID has come and done is it's completely fast forwarded that, that future. And that future in many ways has become the present. What you see here are the nine principles of the future of work that I talk about. And if you, th if you kind of take a glance through these and see how COVID has made them happen. So obviously decentralized or distributed work. I mean, everyone is working from home. And the way and, and suddenly overnight, we have kind of come to this situation where not only people working at home during the pandemic, but organizations are talking about how uh, even going into the future after the pandemic is over, you know, work from home in some way or the other will continue. And so working from office pre pandemic is actually going to change into working from anywhere and anywhere would mean home would mean offices, would mean, uh, you know, uh, parks, could mean uh, co-working spaces, could mean malls. And so work is getting decentralized. And a lot of that is actually happening using collaboration technology. You know, people who were completely unfamiliar with Zoom, MS Teams, WebEx, et cetera, are now absolutely familiar with that. And you know that all of them usage as well as their stock prices have gone up substantially and we kind of use them to do work the way we never used to do that before. Work has also become always on. It was supposed to become always on. Now it has become not only are we working from home, we are also working for home. And we can't pack up and go home and we need to find that balance. The other important things which are going to happen because of this pandemic and work is going to change is that, look, very frankly, I don't think there's ever going to be a job for life. And both companies as well as employees would need to understand that. And therefore, employees would need to invest in lifelong learning rather than just their engineering or an MBA. They need to learn new stuff all the time until they die. Uh, permanent and temporary staff will become the same. Everything that can be automated will be automated. And so a bunch of such principles, which we were looking as future of work principles, have actually become the present. Accelerated by COVID and enabled uh, by technology. And so I just wanted to touch at a very high level upon these things. And just to uh, kind of uh, uh, summarize, uh, we can learn from COVID and its disruption today to build the right practices, the right antibodies, so as to make our organizations immune for tomorrow. And secondly, amongst the many things that COVID has done, uh, it has changed work and brought the future of work to the present. And some of these practices, we will need to continue even after the pandemic is over so that uh, we uh, uh, are much more ready and make our organizations immune for the next big disruption. So this is what I wanted to share with you. This is very quickly uh, my, my coordinates in case people want to get in touch with me uh, and would be very happy to continue this chat offline. So thank you very much, Saurabh and team, and I'll stop sharing and hand Thank you, Jaspeet. That was uh, uh, that was really interesting. So, what I believe is that you know we all need to adapt, and not just uh, uh, you know our, uh, our education, but uh, more than that, we need to learn life skills and acquire newer skills to you know navigate through all this that we are doing today. Everything online and facing glitches, but I'm hopeful that you know we all will be there sometime. So, thank you, thank you, Jaspeet, so much. And uh, uh, for the audience, we'll now move to our uh, panel discussion. Uh, and so uh, for the panel discussion, we have today uh, Mr. Akhil Gupta, co-founder and chief, ex uh, chief tech and product officer, no Booker, and uh, Mr. Adish Dikshit, co-founder, Inflection Point Ventures. Hi, Akhil. Hi, Adish. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Just, just a quick one, Saurabh. You want me to be here or should I go off stage? Uh, uh, your wish. Uh, just okay, before. fine. I'll just go off stage. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, others, if we, if, if we can see you, please. If you can see your video. 
Hey, Lucky, I'll start with you. So, you know, this is a tech and innovation summit. So, what we plan here is, of course, uh, uh, we would uh, really want to understand uh, the tech that, uh, uh, you know, uh, companies are using to make life easier for their consumers. So, very briefly, if you can take us through what No Broker is, uh, uh, you know, doing, and then we can take the uh, discussion forward. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so, guys, as you know that uh, No Broker is a C2C platform, and the way we have changed the uh, transaction happens uh, in real estate, where until No Broker existed, uh, you had to go to a broker. So, most of it on, techno- uh, on the technology front, there was very few things which used to happen. Uh, all the platforms which are primarily the uh, classified platforms and uh, they were helping you discover a broker. With no broker, uh, what we do is uh, we help you connect directly with the owner, tenant, uh, buyer, seller or uh, now uh, in the latest uh, uh, last 18-24 months, we have introduced services like rental agreement, packers and movers. You can do cleaning, you can pay rent and all of it. And the beauty of the platform is that it's a pure play tech uh, thing where there is no feet on street and when there is no feet on street the technology has to be such that it solves all the problem what a customer might have using tech so for instance earlier when uh, you had to search for a house you'll go to a broker and say okay boss this is my office location this is where my uh, wife is working my kids school and then that particular broker may or may not triangulate the best location for you to uh, stay but in no broker the way uh, the technology helps is that uh, we make sure that we triangulate the best location for you not e- uh, not only keeping the uh, uh, of your office your wife's office or the kids school into the place even also consider the traffic and how does your time to travel matters depending on your uh, shift when you are working so if you are working in afternoon it may not be peak time so you may uh, afford to live little uh, uh, further from your office and all those things so that's the one part of it on uh, the other side where the there was an intermediary who was helping you connect with the people now everything happens with the tech so now uh, once the covid started and uh, there was so much of uh, uh, lockdown where people were not able to move one thing what we did at No Broker was we introduced the video tools, video uh, meetings. So now, let's say me and uh, Saurabh are sitting here. Saurabh has the house to show. What he can just do is he can just switch it on on the No Broker app. He can take me through the app, uh, take me through the house if I like it. Uh, I can just close the deal on the uh, video call itself. And once the lockdown eases down, you can use No Broker Packer and Mover to move uh, with the complete sanitization and social distancing uh, norms in place. Similarly, uh, because No Broker has become uh, the uh, transaction platform where the maximum number of transactions happen, uh, with the kind of proprietary data we have, uh, what we have done using ML is uh, build the data tools like Rentometer, where uh, you get to know the best, uh, the ideal rent, what you should be paying for a property. And our uh, data tools are so uh, accurate that even when there are two houses next to each other or two apartments next to each other, one of them is a super luxury apartment and next one is let's say luxury or semi-luxury apartment we can predict rent to the accuracy where we'll say okay building A will fetch higher rent per square feet because of uh, so and so reasons. So that's another thing. Then as we started growing and when we do so as we speak we do more than one and a half lakh new listings. We have close to 10 million, one crore customers who have used our uh, platform, we get thousands of listings on daily basis. And on thousands of listings, there can be uh, pictures starting from 5, 10 pictures to go up to 20, 30 pictures. So to, uh, to find the pictures on the property when owners are posting, what are the relevant pictures? There were two ways, like either uh, there's a team which is sitting and uh, finding okay this is the picture relevant to this particular property and if somebody has put the selfie or maybe an objectionable matter or a video they will remove it but at no broker what we do is we make use of ai so we we have uh, built the platform with which we uh, detect the objects within the picture and we identify whether this picture is really relevant to the property or not and and the uh, key guiding uh, objects for a picture will be like whether the picture has a dining table, it has a kitchen, uh, it has a gas, it has a washing machine, there's a sofa, there is all those things. Uh, 
so that we have automated the complete process with that what happens is the time for a property to go live on the portal also reduces significantly and uh, the consumer who is looking into the pictures they don't get to see anything which is not worth uh, their time or which can be objectionable to them so uh, these are few things along with that uh, the last thing on the technology part which i'll want to add is uh, no broker also has a app called no broker hood which is our apartment uh, management app where we help you hey we help apartments manage their visitors security their erp where their finances and all those things on that thing with covid so we we had a solution where when the maids and the staffs and all those guys are coming within the society they had to punch in the biometric with which their attendance was taken and now with covid what has happened is suddenly people are very scared and they have to be where when they are touching on a biometric machine there may be they may they may catch the infection so we have transformed the technology there where with a the guard device the device the guard has to uh, enable the entries that uh, uses a facial recognition so we have built a in house uh, solution with which uh, you can register face of a maid or the staff and the next time when they are coming you can still follow the social uh, distancing norms you can be 6 feet away from that particular person uh, point the camera towards the person and uh, that attendance will be taken automatically so a lot of stuff goes in uh, uh, the primarily uh, the reason being we don't have any feet on street we have to keep innovating and come up with the solutions which uh, enable the transactions for the customers i'm sure so that that's the need of the hour that we need, you know we need to put as much uh, digital uh, you know solutions in our uh, businesses because uh, as you said uh, uh, feet on the street is not something which uh, we we are able to do right now other if you, if you can put your uh, video on and uh, take some questions uh, sure no absolutely absolutely that was i have i mean i've been testing this i seem to have some challenge with my bandwidth so if i put my video on my audio goes off so i tried and realized i can't go with both so you have to apologize for me for that but no, i can no problem, no go problem. with audio yeah go ahead no please so uh, uh, adesh I, i would come to you with a uh, with a different question you know uh, uh, businesses uh, were trying to uh, you know to make a digital transformation at least everyone hopes to do so but this situation has actually worked as a catalyst for uh, for businesses to do so all the more like uh, 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 akil also just said that you know they have innovated right now to you know their no uh, uh, broker uh, uh, neighborhood uh, app that they have uh, to you know to which 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 does facial recognition also but you know not all businesses can do that a small maybe a small business may not be able to do it and if they want to get a customized solution that might not be affordable so how do they do it and what do they do so you know i think you know let me start with this analogy perhaps it's a very simple analogy so let's say you have a, you know a, you know i'm see i'm using this euphemistically let's say you have a ferrari on the race track and then you have a bullock cart on the race track and let's assume both are competing who do you think is going to win the race yeah ferrari maybe absolutely right so that's i think the analogy we have to draw to say that look you know the digital transformation is no more a comparative differentiator what uh, perhaps it used to be during the digital native days of googles and microsoft it's now uh, you know most of the you know the digital tools so to speak whether it's hardware or software it's all democratized uh, most of those big companies which obviously had kept it in their uh, you know secret wallet they have unleashed and they have started to monetize which means you know pretty much whatever you need for a transformation whether in terms of uh, hardware of course most of the hardware is now on cloud it's easy it's easily accessible to a small to medium enterprise to a large enterprise so the hardware constraint is taken off uh, by having cloud as a platform and in terms of software constraints uh, whether you know whether it's an application software or it's an intelligent software or any ai tool uh you know most of the constraints that were there in terms of high capex in terms of like a small in a small to medium industry would have not probably paid a 100000 dollar license fee up front so now obviously you have the saas model which means you know you can uh, pay as you use or pay as you go as the case may be so that model transformation also has happened so the two constraints the capex constraint is addressed by saas model uh the cloud constraint or the hardware infrastructure constraint is also addressed by cloud which again is similar to the pass or saas model which means the two fundamental constraints are now removed which basically means that small and medium enterprises now will obviously opt for 
you know you know a digital way of doing the business even within the, you know in the range of small and medium obviously not all businesses are open for digital transformation and i think it's uh, too naive to say that every single business has to go through digital uh, transformation that's quite naturally you know impossible there are businesses that are probably better run in a traditional way than probably not one so let's say somewhere in the spectrum you have set of businesses that obviously are right for digital transformation uh, small and medium so now question is how do they go about doing it uh, first and the foremost you know the competition will force them to do it it's not that some consultant has to show up at their doorstep and say you have to do it the speed at which the business will change what we call it as a business velocity that's going to change substantially around them because people you know more and more especially the first time entrepreneurs people who are digital native they are going to take on to the digitization right from the day one they establish this uh, the business model which means the traditional ones who probably are not digital in nature they will be you know left behind by you know the first time entrepreneurs or the tech entrepreneurs which means that you know it's the market force that's going to drive them you know you don't really need uh, you know anything else take for example when the erp came in right what drove uh, the transformation you know in terms of enterprise application it's the market of course these companies also sell and do all that but everybody realizes that if they are not on erp i don't think so any even small to medium enterprises i can't imagine if they are going to work on you know a, a traditional way of you know pen and pencil ledger that's not going to happen Uh, most of them have moved on to you know irrespective of whether it's a large enterprise software like sap oracle or a small enterprise software like a tally etc they all moved on so uh, to your point it's the market forces that's going to drive but what's conducive now which was not earlier was the capex constraint is gone away from saas modeling the hardware constraint is gone away from cloud modeling so to that extent uh, you know i don't believe there are any other constraints that you know um, one can foresee as to why this digital transformation is not going to happen it's absolutely going to happen covid only has accelerated it so what would have probably happened in next 2 3 years is going to happen perhaps in one or two years in fact if i can quote uh, perhaps satya nadella mr satya nadella in fact he said that even in in uh, microsoft in last 6 months they have seen more adoption of you know digital tools than probably they had seen in the last 2 years so uh, you know unfortunate event like covid has just accelerated the journey which in any case would have you know happened and perhaps would have happened little later in the time okay uh, uh, thank you so much so you know you mentioned about microsoft and mr nadella has said uh, that you know adoption in the last uh, six months or so has been much higher than it was so you know uh, i i'll just give you an example that uh, you know there's a there's a hotel activation which uh, for company which uh, which is a tech based company but when you when you go down to uh, real aggregation on ground they, they they had put a lot of people on ground and they were collecting data from them manually and uh, the 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 reservations were done on manually so i just want to understand from both of you that uh, you know even the tech companies were there let's forget about them than the smaller companies how much how much um, of uh, you know uh, adoption have, have we seen grow in terms of the ground level uh, collection of data or maybe services that are provided or onboarding of vendors and everything actually i will uh, request mr gupta to go first because he'll have uh, truly uh, yeah. hands on information and then perhaps i'll follow him sure no problem okay Uh, akil voice uh, you have to unmute is it better can i hear me can you hear me yeah so we we are a tech company with uh, not many people on the ground uh, at least on the no broker side but i can give you the perspective from the no broker hood side where we have people on ground who go give the demo of our uh, software to the management committees of the apartment and they on board them so see uh, as you rightly said uh, uh, some companies may not be doing it but there is no advantage of not doing it because when you have to do it uh, manually onto the ground when people are not with you uh, and you you don't meet them on daily basis because if you have operations in let's say pan india in 20 cities in india it's no way uh, there's no possibility that you can meet them understand so software uh plays a critical role like even in terms of uh, when exactly you start the day how many meetings have you done whether you have you are if you are speaking to any customers how exactly you speak uh, what 
uh, has the customer told uh, the messaging platform what you is uh, what you are using what has been the feedback from the customer on the issue what you are looking into so it's extremely critical at no broker uh, uh, for the no broker hood side of the business where we have the workforce on the ground who is selling the software we have such a software which is in house built which we called uh, uniview which takes care of the complete salesforce management along with the the lead gen and all those things and uh, we have seen a phenomenal uh, uh, experience change both for the customers as well as within the organization where we are able to keep better track of uh, what is happening how uh, much time is it taking for a lead to get converted what are the problems our employees are facing onto the ground and how exactly we should be solving it and at the same time we get the re- almost real time feedback from the customers rather than somebody uh, doing 8 or 10 meetings collecting that feedback sending it back to the headquarters or the office where you look into it now with the uh, with the event of ml and ai where you are already looking into what exactly your person is doing you can get near real time feedback and fix the problem uh, much earlier than uh, what it uh, could have been done without uh, using tech technology for this so i i probably will go after akhil so you know we need to separate wheat from the chaff i guess that's something that we have seen in the market see what's happened today is everybody has gotten on to the bandwagon of ai ml and digitization i think these are all proxy words for things that they don't understand what they're talking about and that's i think it's natural at some point in time in the history of our commerce we we'll talk about iso isms the six sigma i guess these are all marketing gimmicks or let's say is one of their attempts to kind of you know impress the customer and capture the market but deep down if you go and really understand in fact at ipe we we almost see Uh, what about uh, you know on an average out of 10 about 6 to 7 businesses that are tech enabled and in fact when we and, and when we do our due diligence we actually open the hood and do a deep 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 due diligence so i can give you a quote an example i don't want to take the name of the company in fact recently uh, you know we were um, doing a due diligence of a company that claimed to do uh, you know use iot to uh, obviously lend credibility to you know form to fork uh basically tracing the uh, you know the ingredient so to speak and when we actually dug deeper into their technology we realized that it's not an iot it's exactly the point that you're making it is that they are you know creating a army of people who are capturing all the data and they are kind of putting a time stamp on the data and then they're saying oh this data is now iot in fact there's no iot because iot means you need to have iot literally to the entire value chain so you know this is happening in the market but what is extremely important to understand is why do we need tech why do we need this tech transformation see the tech transformation brings three fundamental changes to your business first and the foremost it brings efficiency second thing is it increases your effectiveness of your business and third which is in in many say in many ways than one function of the first two is it basically gives you scale at much lesser unit price so unit economics obviously will work for you very well because you can scale your business at much faster rate than you would otherwise would have done traditionally so the companies that claim to do tech and in the back end if they're not doing it it's a question of time before they're left behind there is no way if they have, and this is an open market there would be another competitor who indeed is have is solving the same business problem perhaps using really the technology in its full and form and shape he will be light years ahead of a non you know a traditional entrepreneur who claims to do tech but is not doing tech so i think it's it's a question of creative destruction in the market uh, sooner or later you know such uh, such entrepreneurs whether it's established one or new ones who don't really do tech they will just fall apart and you know fall by fall by side so uh, it's 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 a it's a natural uh, cleansing process i would say uh, uh, you know uh, uh, i'm sure that you're right that you know eventually they will fall off it's just that uh, for the timing that they're in the market uh, people uh, people who kind of go to use those services burn their fingers and you know uh, lose a lot of money so for a lemon like A, a a a person on the street how does he understand the claims uh, that are made by a, a company whether they are actually true or not that they have all these like you said that you know they were saying that there is a iot enabled everything but it was actually people on the ground and then they have uh, a time stamp on those uh, uh, data so 
so as a layman how do i understand how do i know it i have no way to uh, really, really recognize it and i will uh, probably uh, uh, you know pay for a service for that for that uh, sure no certainly that's that's a challenge that will obviously be there and perhaps we have to kind of you know go through the chats of challenges where people claim that there is a high tech behind and there is no way a layman can really know that indeed there is a high tech behind or not but i guess what what is true is you know if you have let's say take for instance no broker.com i mean i'll take your example because he has given us a context uh, what is the claim by no broker.com no broker.com basically says hey you know what we are a high tech company we are going to digitize all our intelligence around the business and we'll use the al or mi algorithm to translate the business uh, the business intelligence into uh, you know insights and we'll obviously Uh, make the entire process pretty easy like he gave an example where a user app i can just go into the home i mean a broker perhaps he will show the home if supposedly it appeals to me i close the transaction right now if you if you let's say you know you have another vendor who probably is not as tech savvy as no broker.com he makes all this claim but he's not going to deliver so maybe the first few set of customers obviously will fall for it because because of pricing difference or marketing strategy or whatever it is but over a course of let's say reasonable one year or maybe 12 years or oh, sorry uh, one year or two years customers understand you know i think customers are really smart very smart people you know they don't need to be educated they will measure by their experience they'll measure by the success of what the claims have been made and maybe the, they will burn their fingers i mean there could be set of customers who will burn their fingers but i think customers you know are smart and especially what's happening today is because of social media you can't really hide your as much as you can't hide your uh, you know happiness about the quality of service equally you can't hide your disappointment with the service and the social media is will be full of the disappointments and naturally they'll fall off to the point that i made earlier so it's it's a it's experience over a period of time customer knows who is making a claim true claim and who is not making but yes there is still a challenge there it's a process of discovery when nobody comes with a certificate like iso and say if they claim deep tech that means they have deep tech obviously there's no certification through the process of experience and discovery um, most of the customers will get it i mean i would i don't want to put a number out there but if i'm forced to intuitively say 80% of the customers can easily make sense out of it from their experience and say hey this is either true or this is bs so basically uh, just to add to it uh, when you use high tech uh, whether you use simple tech ml ai whatever it is uh, the moat behind technology is that it brings the scale and it brings the speed so uh, just to add to uh, uh, what others were saying the best way to uh, know whether uh, the claims are right or not to see how much time does it take and so let's say uh, for example uh, when no broker uh, launched the rent payment services no broker pay we used to settle payments in one to two days uh, because we didn't had tech to settle but when you go to no broker pay uh, it says if your transaction if your details are right agreement is right everything is correct the uh, transaction uh, the transaction settlement to the owner takes uh, less than 2 minutes and that happens you can try it out uh, yourself so as a customer as others were saying with the uh, experience what they get they will certainly understand whether there is a high tech behind it or not uh, or uh, with the scale like when somebody puts photographs on no broker uh earlier when the owner was putting the picture on the no broker your their property was taking anywhere between 12 hours to 24 hours to go live because there was a person sitting behind who was checking whether the pictures are right or not now when you put it it happens in 15 minutes to 30 minutes because you might be in queue but once your pictures are cleared it goes live or else you get a message from a uh, no broker saying that uh, boss your pictures are not right hence uh, we cannot make your listing live so all these examples experience can uh, very well let you understand whether it's a high tech or so uh, we have a couple of four minutes so we, i i would want to understand one more thing that uh, you know uh, someone mentioned to me yesterday that um, you know as a layman when we uh, when we go uh, to uh, you know take services from say anyone or not only no broker but for that matter any other uh, uh, service provider and you know we are asked to allow something or maybe terms and conditions which is a 18 pages of uh, you know text which which i have to read before i look for a number say for at, at your thing 
and then what happens is that i am batched with uh, you know a a a a mover guy movers and packers guy and everything that comes to so how do we simplify this i mean i am an ordinary person i've come to you for service i just am looking for a house you know i, I just want a house i don't want anything else i am a bachelor you know i have six friends who can carry my luggage and you know move me from one house to the other doesn't matter that i need a van or not or uh, whether any so can we simplify that and uh, you know that user experience is a is a place where uh, can there be some improvement that can see uh, so it does happen and uh, the the complex the process is uh, the bigger will be the privacy policy in terms and conditions and all those things but at the same time you need to understand that none of the business is there to cheat you right everybody is trying to help you and it takes time for everything something new which is coming up whether it's snow broker or any other platform it takes time even uh, so had it been a perfect process then there was no need for innovation because there it's a imperfect process there is a innovation innovation takes its own time and there is a learning loop the feedback which even the company is taking and learning on top of it so uh, so at the same time uh, can there be a uh, shallow service uh, behind what you are claim, uh, claiming no it should not be but at the same time one need to understand what has been the impact of that particular service on your life or how was it before and after using whatever service you have been using and are you really with with the social media you have the power correct and people a lot of people get benefited out of it but at the same time companies get butchered just because you felt that the service what you get was not up to the mark or you felt okay that somebody who came to your house was he he just took out the mask to breathe and instead of uh, telling boss please wear the mask again uh, it's for your safety and our safety taking the picture and putting on the twitter is not going to help anyone so eventually it's 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 a wherever human is involved there is a problem there is a possibility that there will be some kind of uh, process deviation there will be some kind of misalignment to what has been told because every human uh, uh, behaves differently to a certain situation so it it becomes duty of both the brand and the consumer to understand what is happening and provide the right feedback back to the company so that they can also help in improving the uh, service further okay adarsh uh your your thoughts on the, on this uh, sure sure perhaps you may need a minute to close the call so i i would absolutely agree with akil see at the end of the day entrepreneurs survive because they're solving a problem see, for them the entire the edifice of their business is are they solving the problem is customer happy with the solution so quite naturally their all their efforts will be to say how can they reduce the friction how can they increase the transparency how can they increase the trust which means it's an iterative process you know no no there is no uh, business problem that has a solution which is 100% from day one over a period of time you gather customer inputs you understand the customer behavior psyche needs better and you refine so to your question do i need to sign a 16 page maybe not maybe over a period of time you realize that you know the 16 page can be reduced to 8 page or 4 page or perhaps there are other ways to get your your confirmation to what you're doing but the fact is that you still need a confirmation see that can not go away because that's part of the solution you know without that the solution will fall apart so there are, so effectively what it means is you need it yes can it improve absolutely and any tech business no tech business including the microsofts of the world or googles of the world have started off with the same level of service as they are today it's evolved over a period of many years and that's the nature of the tech so uh, you know it's an evolution and we just have to give time and the entrepreneurs understand it really very well and they are on top of it by the way they are like focused on customers like absolutely so i i i have to drop off i have a call starting sharp at 12 yeah, so we are also others to be able we will also run out of time we have to close it thank you so much uh, akil and others for being here i would have loved to uh, you know continue it was very interesting and as i see that you know this transformation of course is a process and it's a journey uh, which everyone has to undertake and it will take some time to be there uh, thank you so much uh, gentlemen thank you thanks for having us thanks thank you. thank you thank you all our attendees and i would request you to join us uh, on our next session that is on deep tech you can do it by uh, you know uh, changing the room uh, with an on 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 your left hand panel uh, there will be rooms so you can change the room and go to our next session thank you so much